Hey. Hey, good morning, everyone. What's going on? Car guys, car gals, and all you solutionaries out there, welcome to the cafe. This is Lou Ramirez, the car guy. This is Fred Lenartz, the subprime hero. And we are excited to be brewing solutions with you today. We have a very special guest. guest that's going to be in the room. I can't even, I can't even speak yet um, because I'm just really pumped up. <laughs> well, you've only taken half a sip of coffee. Yeah, a couple sure. sips in, right? And uh, it's time for us to get ourselves pumped up and going. So I don't know where it is that you are, what it is that you're doing, but get yourself ready to forgive, focus, fly with us, and actually start brewing solutions. Tag a car guy, tag a car gal, share, 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 share. So excited to get Dave inside of the cafe with us, but you go ahead and tag a friend and get them in the cafe. Get them in here. Let's start sharing, folks. Let's have some fun. Before we go, y'all know what it is. You know what time for this part right here. Get Get ready. ready Get ready. Hey, Woo! car guys, car guys, welcome <laughs> to the cafe. We are so, so excited. We want to make sure that you know that we are brewing solutions with some of the best. Some of them are elite FI partners. That's right. And we are so excited to be bringing you this brew with them. Teamed up with Think Ad Group. Ad group. You know what it is. Now, Easy. if you want to get a hold of each one of those two, www.elitefipartners.com and then www.thinkadgroup.com. Make sure you guys reach out to them. They are solutionaries at the finest. They're doing everything they can to get this business better. And I really appreciate each one of those people. Um, and we appreciate you guys all for jumping in here this morning. Absolutely. This morning, we have a great guest for you. You know, we normally talk a lot about the front side of the house, folks. We talk about the front side of the dealership, car sales people, and this and that. Now, let's get into some fix stops. Let's get, get into, into the back, back shop, right? Now, these people in the back shop are some amazing, amazing, amazing people. They do some great stuff. Now, Dave Foy, he is a mastermind when it comes to this stuff, and I'm so excited to have him here. If you guys have heard of the fix stop mastermind, have you guys heard of that? Have you? Maybe. Yeah, I know I have. I've, been, I've had the opportunity to be on, on his meetings and everything, and it's been a lot of fun to watch him grow. And he is now, his podcast is now in the top 200 in business podcast out there right now, wow. folks. It's a pretty big deal. And it's, and it's growing fast. He just started getting this going. So wait till you see how far it's going to come. Folks, make sure you guys check out their podcast too, alongside ours. Get you a little car guy coffee. Why don't you do? Get you some thick socks. You know what I'm saying? That's right. What's, what's the, the, the next thing that you do after you solve the transportation problem for the customer? You got to make the introduction to service. Why? Because that's setting you up for who it is that we're also partnered up with. And that's next sale. Oh. We are so excited yes. uh, to be teamed up with in other incredible people that are setting you up for success on always keeping you focused on, whoa, getting to that next sale. Mm-hmm. So we are so excited about that. Oh, let's try that whoa real quick. We're going to bring him in real fast one time. Bring that. Whoa. whoa. Get you some <laughs> of that next sale. Car guys, car gals, without further ado, we are so excited to brew with you and mm-hmm. bring in to the cafe, Mr. David Foy. Welcome. What's up, guys? <laughs> Good morning, my friend. Good morning. We are so pumped up to, to just be talking uh, with somebody that really knows what they're talking about and knows how to talk well. See, mixing those two together is so, <laughs> so, so key. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've, you've definitely, um, you, you're, you're uniting a lot of people with your show, and I, and I love having you here. I think that you're, you're much, you're just the way we feel about our show, I know you feel about yours, and I know you're out there just trying to get the word out there. You're trying to get people to understand, learn new processes, understand what's hot and what's not in the business. So thank you for doing that. We welcome you to the show. We're going to ask you a lot of questions today. We're going to have a lot of fun today, Dave. I want, I want to get to know you. I want to become your best friend. <laughs> All right. I, I brought my coffee. I'm ready to go, boys. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. I love it. Well, you know what it is that we generally do, folks. We, we will pull out a five-liner. We're going to talk about some fresh news. We're going to do what it is that our time allows us to be able to do while we're in here. Uh, but one thing that we want to make sure that we do from the front of the house to the back of the house and everywhere we go it's to apply three F's to our lives in order to keep growing. You and that it. is to forgive, which means drop the weight of unforgiveness and all the things that maybe has happened to you. Focus on where it is that you want to go, what it is that you want to do, and what you're called to become. Mm. And fly to higher heights than you've ever dreamed. And once you get to those high heights, you find out it can get higher and you keep growing. So on three, car guys and car gals and everybody out there, whether you're driving, flying, whatever's happening, join us as we begin to fly. Throw them hands on the shoulders, Dave. 
on three. One, two, three. Forgive. Focus. Fly. And keep growing. Keep growing. <laughs> Dear, get it. All right. I love it. Oh, Thank now you so we're much. Ready. Now we're ready. We're awake. Let me get one more sip of this Car Guy coffee, and then we'll get going. But you can get it going to carguycoffee.com and just clicking on the coffee shop. You guys know where it's at. We do have our own brew out there, folks. We released our first one about two months ago now. Yes. It's been about two on months. On National Coffee Day, it came out. Yeah, National Coffee Day. So we're trying to get it all across the nation. We want it in every service department. We want it in every front so- shop. We want it everywhere because this is what is needed. This is going to be the official coffee yeah. of dealerships, right? So yeah. let's get it going. So Dave. Appreciate you being here this morning. We're going to ask you five questions. The five questions we ask are very important. The very first one is always the same, and it's the one that I like the most, actually, and it's your purpose. Dave, we all wake up every single day. We all have a reason why we do what we do. You're not just doing what you do as a profession, but you are reaching out and doing extra, just like I I know what that's about, and and I have a feeling I'm going to know the answer to this, but what is your purpose? What motivates you to be who you are to keep growing? I can, I can uh, bring that down to one short sentence. I want to leave the automotive business a little bit better than I found it. Booyah. That, uh, in, in short order, that is my purpose. There, there's not enough uh, people out there giving back to an industry that, that has been very good to a lot of us. And uh, for, for those of us who were lucky enough to have great mentors when we were coming up through the business, it's time for us to, to give back, uh, you, you see a lot of changes in the shop and things where where some some of the the uh, the more experienced techs are not in that mentor kind of mindset anymore. Yeah. Um, and we can we can we can look inward and blame ourselves, uh, but because there was such a such a focus on on keeping productivity high and and producing hours and pumping things out that that growing that that young set of technicians became secondary. And now we find ourselves in, in a situation where we, we need more young technicians, and we've kind of turned our older technicians a, away from that, that mentoring type of, type of feeling. So that, uh, th- that is my purpose. I want to leave this business a little bit better than I found it, and, and I'll do everything that I can to make that happen. What I could tell you is this, Dave, is you already have done that. You know what I mean? I think you're going to be leaving this business way better than you started in it. Okay, so... Is, you know, I, I love your attitude about that. I love where you're going with that. That is a great purpose. That's your legacy that you're leaving. It's a, le- it's, it's a legacy of growth. It's a legacy of, of team. It's a legacy of, of, of day, you know, and what, you, and what your mentality is about what you do. And you're right. You know, I think that it, that goes across probably the world, not just in technicians where the older guys are just kind of giving up on the newer guys, right? They're like, eh, I don't mm-hmm. have time for these, these millennials. We don't have right. time for this, right? Um, and I think that you're starting to see that everywhere, but I love that you're talking about it because that's the thing. If you don't talk about it, it just, it never gets fixed. It never gets talked about. It never, it, nothing's going to come about. But when you talk about it and you make it aware and you let people know, you let these technicians know, look, buddy, you need to be a mentor. You need to, you need to really help people. Not only will it help you or them, it's going to help you beyond belief. Mm-hmm. As we mentor people, and I'm sure you know this, as we mentor people and we start coaching them, it kind of helps us stay fresh. It kind of helps us yeah. keep updated. It kind of helps us get better at our jobs too. And it's a weird thing. As you're teaching, you're learning. It's kind of it's right. crazy. <laughs> so I, I love that you're, you brought that up, and I think that is a great mentality to have. That's a great way of thinking. It's a great purpose. Um, yes, that's a great a great why, and a lot of truth to why it is that we're even here doing what we're doing. Right? Mm-hmm. We want to leave a deposit into this business that has its legacy that stays longer that also is making other people better. I, and, and there's a part of it now as we start to see these things grow and de- definitely based off of the root system that you have into this business that I don't really know if you come out of the business as now we're, we and you especially are established as voices to people that are trying to find a way to improve and upshift and uplift their life. So even in, in the, the years, the years, years, years to come, I believe that we're still going to get the chance to lend our voice, lend our excitement, lend our encouragement to those that are coming um, inside of a business that never really focused too much on succession, never focused too much on somebody else raising to greatness. Um, Mm -hmm. 
like we've strived to, right? Um, and almost it was uh, barriers. We didn't want to give love to the to the better car salesman. We we did, we wanted to kind of throw them shade. We didn't want the better mechanic <laughs> to have that job because he'll show me what it is that I don't know, right? Um, so many different things that that happened that kept us in competition within our own businesses uh, to where instead we should raise it up like a family. And I love that you're saying that because we want to leave our family better off than, than it was when we started, right? I mean, it's always, son, if you only knew what I had to go through to get here. Right. You know I mean? <laughs> we, 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 yeah. we explain those stories, and I'm, I'm so thankful that we're here with a solutionary that's like that. Uh, but I, yeah, believe it's, totally I, I mean, you know, guys, it, it comes down a lot to fear. Right, because there's there's the fear of of the the top technician in the shop that he's not going to be the top technician anymore, and that that new guy coming up is now going to take over his role, and maybe he's maybe he has that that kind of leadership role where the dealership looks at him to do stuff, whether it's change a light bulb or whatever, but they're looking right. to him, <laughs> and and he's afraid he's going to lose that. Right, that that's that right. starts to become as much as it shouldn't. It starts to become part of who you are, and, and you start to Rather than looking at yourself as as Dave, now I'm I'm Dave, the guy that the the shop needs, you know. And and, yeah. and if you can if you can lose that lose that, I'm not going to say lose your individuality, but you you need to you need to lose that part of uh, assembling your identity on what other people think of you, yeah. and, and start to expand that outwards to just helping other people. And and that 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 goes. Uh, I won't speak to other industries, but I'm sure it happens. That that goes all the way up. The the top advisor doesn't want to teach the new guy because he's gonna he's gonna take some of his gross, right? And the the manager doesn't want to help that top advisor because he knows that somebody's gonna start liking him better and they're gonna move him into his seat, uh, it, which is part of what the problem in this industry has been is is instead of us having career paths set up for these people and and. Oh. And showing them a way to, to move forward with, without it affecting you. Mm, right. I mean, it, it, I'll tell you right now, if there's somebody in, in my team that, that shows that promise and, and we're mentoring them and putting the time into them, I, I'm the happiest guy in the room if they get a management job and leave me. Right. You know? Yeah, that, that's, that's... I, I don't, I don't want to lose my best people, but you know what? That's, I, I, just, I just posted about this on LinkedIn the, the, maybe last night. That that's I'm proud of that. I, I have guys that I've mentored that that have come from the shop and are now service directors of, of dealerships, and and I'm proud of that. That that's these are guys who have who have done the work and bettered themselves and bettered the industry by coming up and and learning their trade. Uh, so I couldn't agree more. I mean, when you, what you're just talking about right there. That is that legacy. There's a, you're, I love that you said that because there's a lot of managers out there that don't want their salespeople to become managers. Absolutely. It blows my mind. It's like they want to be that guy that's the power, and then they don't ever want anyone else to be anything close to them. Yeah. I, I, I disagree. You know, I, I understand that mentality, I guess. I guess I could see that, but I don't, that's I don't that's live that. That's I'm right. excited. When you, hear, when you have a salesperson okay. come to me, and I think that's one of the things, and I think a lot of my guys could attest to this, is that they're not scared to come talk to me about – plans that they have for the future because i encourage it i'm not the guy who says well i don't think you're ready for that yet no <laughs> you could be two three years in the business i mean lou and i were fast trackers we got in the business and then we try to become management quick ourselves too so i understand if somebody wants to do that i know why they want to do that you know there's something about that but it does take time you do need to learn your skills you do need to have your your fun your fundamentals your foundation built really well once you do that whether it takes a year two years 10 years it doesn't matter then you're ready but you got to be ready, but you also have to be ready to get on this side of the, and understand that it's no longer just you you have to be responsible for. Right. It's everyone right. when you become in that next level. And that could be something that some people don't realize when you take over that position, how much work it really is. Because they just see you sit there and you all, oh, <laughs> no, buddy, it's a lot more than you think. And I have to hear all these stories, right? But there's nothing better than having a person that you trained up, that you taught your skills to, that all of a sudden you know that they have the capability. They just need the opportunity. You know, mm -hmm. when your store is not when you're when you're that guy and you have your management set up and there's no room for more management. What is your what are your people going to do? They're not going to sit there for they they have goals too, just like us. Right. So if, you, if mm -hmm. you're a goal oriented person, understand your customer your salespeople also are goal, goal oriented. At least you want That's them to why be. You hired them. That's why you hired them, right? <laughs> right. You want people that are motivated, not just people who just ah uh, I'm drooling. I just do what you tell me to do. No, you want people mm -hmm. who are very self-motivated, who work really hard. 
people who are the senior techs who are going to train the younger techs, people who are management who are willing to train their other people to become management one day, whether it's with them, which you hope, but if yeah. not, and they move on to a different store, you want them to flourish. You know, and I, I think it's, you know, I think it's great and I honor you for that day that you're like that because I agree with that 100%. Mm-hmm. There's nothing better than having somebody that I helped come up in the game a little bit or I was with or partnered with while they're doing it and see them move on to do bigger and better things. And it's, that's that's beautiful. It's for them and their family and for everything. It's, and it's beautiful. That's part of the Absolutely. shift that I see happening in, in the industry right now as a whole. Um, because you see, we, we basically built up many big organizations and put so yes. much effort into building that organization where now the shift is coming where the organization is actually having to lean onto the people to growing themselves too and being the pillars that hold it up. So you building your brand, us building ours, others building theirs, right? The salespeople, uh, the, the technicians, all of those people are becoming strong individuals that are propping up the, a company, right? right? And, and, yeah. and you want that. You want good, solid, stable People that are that are wanting to keep growing, wanting to expand, and if they fly on uh, to another venture, hallelujah! But the 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 whole thing that has been holding us back from becoming better has usually been the fear over whether or not we are actually going to be taken care of if somebody else rises up too. And we have to be so firm inside of ourselves that we have faith that no matter what happens. We're going to be okay, and if we do what we're supposed to do, the results are going to uh, speak for themselves and create themselves. And we're not we're not worried about somebody else rising. If anything, uh, it, that usually is such a distraction for those people mm-hmm. that are fearful, right? They're so yeah. focused on trying to now impede somebody's growth that they're not growing themselves. They're stopping somebody else from growing. And then at the end of the day, when you're, especially in your world where you're calculating hours and time and jobs that mm-hmm. got to get done, you're like, nothing's <laughs> getting done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah, so it's, it's fixed happens. operations for a reason, guys. It's, uh, right. there, there's only a certain amount of hours that we have every single day to, to, to capitalize on and you can't get those back. That's right. Uh, it, just like life. And if you're going to worry about somebody else coming up, then that, like you said, is just, blurring your focus on what you need to be doing for the day and in the end it's going to hurt everybody's performance and when they're asking you to leave you just need to look in the mirror because you're the reason that they asked you to leave no nobody else nobody else did that i i uh i had one of my mentors his dad um used to say and i'll, I'll censor myself on this he uh he used to say if you meet more than two a holes in a day you need to go home and look in the mirror because it's probably you <laughs> you know it, it's it's weird because you attract what you're putting out and right period, mm-hmm. right so whether it's being an a-hole whether it's being a beautiful loving person whether it's being in the middle whatever yeah. you put out there is what you're going to get back it's also what you mm-hmm. notice it's also what you pay attention to because what you feel inside it's like you know it, it's something about that. When you have that anger inside you, whether you believe it or not, it, it's, it's, you're going to attract all that anger from other people because they're going to mm-hmm. feel it from you, and then they're just they're going to be short fused just like you will be. So you know, sometimes you just got to take that moment to really relax before you do stuff. <laughs> take a moment to think. When you're really upset, I think this like it's probably the best time to walk away for a moment. You know, absolutely. Because how many times have any of us been so upset, said something, and immediately go, "Oops." <laughs> right? <laughs> I didn't mean that. You know, whether it's with your clients, your family, your friends, people, strangers, doesn't matter. But you've, we've all done it. There, I don't think there's a person on this planet who's not guilty of doing something like that. So when it mm-hmm. happens, you realize, oh, my gosh, you're almost immediately, apo- like, to words come out. You're like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it, <laughs> right? <laughs> it just came out. You made me do it. <laughs> but, but you know, you have, you have to really work on that mentality, you know. And, and I, the one thing I've, I've caught, you know, from... A lot of places and a lot of people and you know living around the world is that it's it is it's about what that culture is you know and if that culture is not right it's very difficult to to really form something beautiful um you know we do have a bunch of people i want to bring this yes, up really yeah, quick we have a lot of people commenting all over the place i just haven't had a chance to bring it up we have jason garris he's on here he's just the next sale himself we got russ man i know you're familiar with russ man he mm-hmm. is he's the the man. russ man actually i don't know if you heard he's made some plan- he's made some changes um yeah. And that's something I want to have Russ come on the show. I don't know if I should talk about his business on here, but I, I love the guy. Russ yeah, is the man. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Russ. Um, yeah, big moves coming. It is. And I know that big things are coming for him, too. Um, he is a great representative for whatever he does. In the game of life, 
Russ is a good dude. I absolutely love him, and I appreciate him. I'm, thank you for being here this morning, Russ. Welcome. Jason says, I love that song. Must have been the opening credits. That's yes, right. I don't blame him. It's amazing. I get pumped up when, with That's your right. tune. Yeah. <laughs> I love right. Jason. And then we got Joe. What What's up, Joe? Man? He says, good hey. morning. Something about spot on, Fred. Yeah. I, I must have been. You're, you're saying well, you're, saying you're, spot you're right. On. I am spot on. <laughs> I appreciate that, Joe. <laughs> and then you got exactly Lou. Lou, he's even throwing some props at you. All right. So Russ says, career path is the way to make the fear go away. It makes it transparent. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent on that. And then exactly. That's what Joe says. Russ, man, absolutely. Building up others creates karma, encourages others to pay it forward. That's right. Thank you very much, Joe. Yes. You're, he's right on the same level with us. Um, Russ also says, Joe, a safe place for all to succeed in ideas from everyone. Everyone gets a seat at the table, the round table. That's right. Right? So, <laughs> round table, square table, whatever cafe table it is. Tables. Great podcast by Frank. Oh, what's up, Frank? Good morning, my friend. Hello, Frank. And then we got Melissa. Oh, Cardell Coffee. This, Cardell. We are starting a second half of our Cardell. coffee, and it's going to be the Cardell Coffee podcast. And That's Melissa right. and her sister, Michelle, they, they own a store up in, Mich- up in Michigan called Rainbow Motors. Really good friends of ours. Guests of ours, and they're getting ready to start the Car Gal Coffee Podcast. Nice. So it's going to be an affiliate program. We're going to get some stuff going. Everyone's going to get opportunity. It's going to bring a whole other side of the business to us. I'm excited about that. We need to get you on that show because you would have yes, a great yes, time yes, too. Yes. So, and then you can't unring the bell when you say something <laughs> hurtful. Yes, that was a good so, point there. So that's true. That's so true. Oh, I appreciate everybody for jumping on this morning, commenting. If you have questions for Dave, please throw them in there. Yes. Once we get through a couple hours, we'll go we'll hit them with them and he'll be I'm sure he'll be happy to answer anything you guys may have questions about. If you guys are looking to get on his show, on his podcast, reach out to him. If you have some yeah. if you have if you have something that is needed to be talked about, Dave is going to have you on there and talk about it. Dave, I tell people this story real quick Jeff, before we get to the second question. When you, when I was invited to your, to the, the fixed stops mastermind, and yeah. when I showed up, I didn't realize I was supposed to be a guest speaker. I thought <laughs> I was coming in to watch it. So you're like, and then here's Fred, our guest speaker, and I'm like, oh, I freestyled that, didn't even know if I, <laughs> I was not prepped, but you know, it was, and that was, it was a great time though, but I do remember that, and I remember being yeah. like, oh, cool. Yeah, hey guys, you, 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 were, you were inking deals while, while you were doing the show. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're, you're you're an amazing person, and I do appreciate you. And I and I, I'm excited about you know this whole thing. So yeah, so Lou, what's up? What's up with that? So number two, flowing in, into that question again, just because we're having a great conversation, and and this is such such good brewing that's happening here. You don't want to waste a sip of it, and you, you're you're saying a few things that are key. In, inside of this industry, that that fear, you know, we're, we're definitely trying to raise up the faith level of people, right? And that that always combats fear. Perfect love drives out all fear, and you you have you have plenty um, inside of your tank to make some great things happen. And when you get fueled by people that you see, so we're, we're talking to Dave, and people seeing you, and people surely have tried to find a way to be like you because they were inspired by you. And that's where it's silly for us to ever stop somebody from growing because they're inspired to grow because they see what your success is. They see those managers doing good. They see those managers buying things. They see those managers in their lifestyles, and they want to get to that level, and they want to grow, which is what you want out of people when you're hiring them. And then we get in their way, and we have people that that, that try to – Try to help us get on the way to where it is that we're going and different connections start to happen, but then moves start to make. So speaking of moves, you're a car guy on a different side of the house than the, than a lot of the people that we get to, the chance to speak with. So I want to talk about what actually brought you into the car business, whether it's the back end, front end, wherever it is that that door is. You know what I mean? What brought you into the car business itself, Dave? Yeah, so... Uh, um my illustrious high school career, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which uh, I was I was not much of a student. I was I was much more about uh, about the fun and um, and the friendships and everything else, relationships in in high school more than the actual work. So, um, I decided that I actually wanted this. This was 1987 when I was graduating high school, guys. This was you know horse and carriage days. Um, <laughs> it was DeLorean days. I, it yeah, was DeLorean yeah, days. Yeah, yes, for sure. So, so I, I decided I wanted to get into a, a new field of, of computer technology and learning how to repair computers. Mm. Um, my dad worked at, at a local college, 
and uh, they had they had one of the best programs in the country at the time. I signed up into that, and before the end of that summer, Ford introduced a new program called Asset, and my dad was like, um, my dad always having the utmost confidence in my 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 uh, mathematical skills said, a lot of math involved in that computer stuff. Uh, maybe you should check out this thing. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I went to um, I went to a presentation from Ford and loved what loved what they presented, what they showed the future as, um, which it is kind of funny because the future that they showed back in 1987 is kind of coming around now, 30 plus years later. Wow! Uh, and so I switched over. I joined that asset program. I went through there. I became a technician, uh, and turns out I'm not a really great technician. So uh, that, that's how I ended up in, in the business, but about four years of being a technician, um, and uh, I, I, I was kindly asked to not be a technician anymore, so I moved to a service advisor role, and that's, that's where I found my groove. And, uh, and from, from there, it's history. We, all, we, we just took a slow trajectory up from there. That's, that's awesome. I, I love that story. You know, you have a couple comments about that. Frank says that he was an asset graduate in 1990. You also have – Frank has a quick question for you. I'm going to hit you with this. This isn't part of the five-liner, but it's definitely a good yeah. question. Frank says, Dave, what's the future of flat rate? Ooh, that's a loaded question, Frank. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you that my opinion is that flat rate was uh, was outdated about 20 years ago and, and that it needs to go and that uh, if we are truly going to progress – as an industry in fixed operations, that, that we need to start paying our technicians properly. There, uh-huh. there, is, there is no higher trained person in that dealership than a technician, and there is also nobody in the dealership that is producing money except the technician. Every single one of us is an expense except for those technicians. Um, and, they, and they are the only ones that, that put up with the type of pay structure where they have, where they might be there for 60 hours and get paid for 40. Um, I don't know of many people that would put up with that in, in, in their work life. Uh, if, you, if your boss told you to come into work for 60 hours, but I was only going to pay you for 40. Um, right. you know, and, and obviously there's some great technicians who are out there turning 100 hours when they work 40. Um, but but it, it, it shouldn't be like that. And, and it doesn't matter if there's, if there's a hybrid solution, whatever it is, but the straight flat rate system is outgrown. It needs to go. I love that answer, I, and that's a good point. And, I, I, and what I like about that is that I love how you just brought shine light onto the to the text yeah. because a lot of people they, they kind of they don't they they think that they're just hey those guys are highly trained people. When you're working at a service department, you have to be updated. Much like you salespeople out there, when you're up front and you have to get updated on a new car store and you have to get updated on the new technology of vehicles, you have to reassert yourself. That's nothing. Compared to what a, what a tech has to learn every single time they renew a motor, every time they freaking mm-hmm. add a new electronic device to this motor or they change a whole way of vehicles being built, it's something that they have to learn. And if they don't learn it, they're going to fall behind. They're, you know, and the thing is, like, he, like Dave's talking about, they are highly trained on that. When you have a good service rep or, excuse me, a service tech, you need to take care of them. And I think he's 100% right in that. Flat rates is outdated. It's been outdated for a long time. I don't know a lot about that, but it 100% makes sense to me in my brain, what you said. Because yeah. I, 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 if you, you get what you pay for, just like anything in life, mm-hmm. if you, right. you want to, you want to, you know, sur rate your, you know, cut rate your, your uh, service pay, then you're going to get mm-hmm. cut rate service. If you want to, but if you, and I'm not saying that you need to charge people out the yin yang for stuff, but you got to charge them a fair rate. You have to pay your people fair prices. And like yeah. you said, when they put in those type of hours, they need to get paid accordingly. They need to get taken care of accordingly because they earn that. When you earn something, yeah. you deserve it. You know, you should always get back what you put into something. So, mm-hmm. absolutely. The industry was I still, love that. Let's find a way to cut the legs of those that are producing for us. <laughs> right? I, I don't understand how that's always been the concept, whether it was the front end or the back end. The salespeople are making too much money because they're making me too much <laughs> money. Let's chop their pay plan. You know what I mean? Or vice versa on the other side. And I don't, and, and that's still, still something I don't, I don't get to this day. Um, but again, I believe that the industry is changing. Yeah, I think things are shifting. I think that yes. that question is posed to you because we're inside of that paradigm shift. I appreciate you giving us an exclusive answer, putting that loaded question out there with no a doubt. boom, boom, boom shot uh, to the to the face of everybody that needs to actually look and see is what we're doing working, and could we make it more efficient? Can we make it better? Mm-hmm. Can we have better relationships with the people that work with us? Um, it, it is it is such a 
a great thing to know that people like you are solutionaries that are actually trying to be a voice to people that are hearing things uh, from all different angles, right? There's right. so much chaos. There's so much, what's the word that's in everybody's advertisement? Uncertainty, right? That's yeah. all over the place. <laughs> and uh, like, like um, Russ did say about career path, you know, creating that certainty that puts you on a path that shows you, look, focus on where it is that you want to go, what it is that you want to do, and we want to help get you there. Um, and the intelligence that um, a tech has and what it is that they know is why, I mean, I think about it sometimes when I sit there and talk to technicians um, as a salesperson, because as, as sales guys, we think that we talk fantastically and we feel like we sound so smart when we speak. And sometimes we say some things to techs and they look at us like, man, you're an idiot. You, know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, but they know, you, like you said, you know some serious stuff. We teach them uh, some onboarding to get them ready to start talking to a customer. You guys know how things actually work and come together and get assembled. You know, I am not the genius underneath the hood. My father was that. Speaking of fathers, uh, fathers do lead the way. You know, your, your father pointed you in a direction and just challenged you. And it's so mm -hmm. key that we allow those voices to challenge us to continue to get better. As you say that right now, as a father to this industry, right. answering that question, saying, hey, look, we need to get this off of the table and refocus now on our relationships with the technicians that are keeping everything going in this back end. And I'm so thankful for that answer. Great, great, great question, Frank. I, I, you know, and that is, that is, I love that thing. I love that answer. I love where we went with that. Um, you know, you talked about your father earlier. You talked about how he knew your math wasn't quite there. <laughs> you know, what I do, you know, there's a lot of people that influence us as we come up in this business. You know, we've sometimes we have mentors. Sometimes if we have the opportunity to be a mentor. It's great. But, you know, we all start off with having mentors, right? There's been people that have influenced you. There's been somebody that helped you, guide you. You know, it sounds like maybe it's your father. I don't know. Maybe that's going to be the answer. But the question I have for you next is who has been the biggest influence for your career path in your life? Yeah, so the, obviously my dad was was a big, big influence um, in my life, and and from the standpoint of um, hard work, uh, mm -hmm. he, he absolutely taught me the, the the value of working hard and and always working toward something. Um, I spent a, a, a whole summer when I was when I was thirteen uh, mixing cement in a wheelbarrow so he could build a chimney on the house. Um, and uh, wow. it uh, l later in his life, he remembers that story different, that he rented a cement mixer, and all I had to do was pour the bag <laughs> in and put some water in. Uh, that cement mixer was me and a hoe was that cement mixer. <laughs> uh, look at my cement mixer here. Hey, yeah. Here. Yeah. So, I, I mean, and, you know, obviously as, as a 13-year-old, I had better things to do on at 7 a.m. on a sad day, which was, would have been sleeping. But, um <laughs> <laughs> that 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 served me very well in my life. Uh, as far as actually coming up in my in my career, I was extremely lucky. I, I had three three guys um, who were mentors to me. The the first service manager that I worked for um, taught me the value of customer service, taking care of the customer. Um, and uh, I mean, he taught me a couple of couple of key phrases in my life. Um, the number one was uh, don't let the bastards weigh you down. And number two was you, you need to learn to tell people how to go to hell so that they look forward to taking the trip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. And uh, th those, are, those are two phrases that, that have served me well in this business because there are people who will grind on you every single day uh, to, to, to weigh you down to the point that, that they, they get to, to win if you will. Um, and, and obviously the other one is just, it's speaking skills. It's being able to talk to people and, and, uh, convey a, a vision of, of what you want, um, and what you expect and to, to convey that in a way that, that they can see the vision for their life within that vision that you've portrayed. Uh, because if you can't paint a big enough vision for people, then, then they can't see their vision of their life within that. And therefore, they, they don't feel like they belong in that, in that organization. Um, the, 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 my dad and, and that first service manager, definitely the two biggest, uh, the biggest pieces. And then I had two other, uh, another service manager, service director that I worked with at a bunch of dealerships, um, who taught me the, the numbers side of, of things. Um, 
And it's wow. funny that my dad always thought I wasn't very good at math because now, like, that's all I deal with is numbers. So um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of funny how that came around. But uh, and, then, and then there was one other guy who was a fixed ops director of, of a multi-store group that I got to work with um, who showed me the, the inside of those numbers, who showed me how to go, go inside those numbers and find out what they meant and what, what levers you had to pull to make them move. Wow. Well, that's awesome. You know, and all those people are some amazing people that I could assure you that, you know, because they've, they've molded you into you, you know, and what I can mm -hmm. say about you, Dave, is that you are now those people. You are that for a lot of people right now. And I, and it's, it's really, it's really nice to see that, you know, I, I what I love is I have a friend on the fixed top side and, and it's, it's neat that I can reach out to you. You know, one thing about you I've, I've noticed is that, you know, I mean, it could be a month before I've contacted you, but if I send you one message, you reply just that fast and you, and you don't, you're not, you're never going to be too good for this or that. And I appreciate that about you. I, and I could tell that you're just that guy who, you're the, you're, you're the big teddy bear. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure, I'm sure that you're not. I'm sure that you also have this side of you where you, it, cause you to be a manager, to, to run a, to run a service department, to do anything like that, you gotta have some spice in you too. You gotta be able to tell people no. Like you said, mm -hmm. you gotta be able to tell people to go to hell if you have to. And I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying, but there's, it gets to mm -hmm. a point. I understand that, you know, when there's sometimes a customer, you, you give them a little bit, now they want more. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, that, oh, you give them an inch, they take a mile. Right. And, and then they keep coming. There's always that one client that does that. And you're like, why is it, you know, I'm doing it, bending over backwards for this person, but they right. keep, they keep taking advantage of it instead of realizing that they got a great opportunity. They save money. Now it's time for you to pay up next time. Right? You can't mm -hmm. just constantly yeah. get discounts. Now, the, you know, it's not, <laughs> that's part of it. So you got to be a little bit like, listen, buddy, you know, you can do it in a nice way, but there's, oh, yeah. and I'm sure in the service, I can't imagine the, the stuff that people bring in saying there's something wrong with it and there's really not and they just want this fixed and you don't know how to feel like, listen, there's so many scenarios I could bring up about <laughs> being in the back. Because, you know, there's a lot of them up front, too. You know, when we're in the front and you know this, you've been doing this so long, you know that there's issues both ways. There's always this, there's always that. The biggest thing is, and one thing when I talked about on your show was that the front and the back always seem to be separated. You know, they yeah. always they always seem to be like, ah, oh, I don't like the front side. The back side makes the money. The front side makes it, whatever. It's the dealership. It's a team. So mm -hmm. I, I, I always believe in the culture of, like, if I owned my own store, my culture would be to teach everybody to be and have sales meetings together and all this because I know that service reps are salespeople. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, some of them are, are some of the best salespeople that I've ever met. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. And, and they can do some amazing stuff, but they decide to do that because that's what they love to do. Instead of be, and they don't want to sell cars, they want to sell service. They want to help right. people get their vehicles mm -hmm. fixed, you know. Everybody yeah. has their niche, and I think it's great that you found yours. I think that, you know, we're all young enough to where we may in five years decide we don't want to be in the auto business at all, and we move on. <laughs> and whatever right. that is, it's going to be an amazing thing because I'm sure that we all would excel at whatever we do. You know, life is, that's what it's about. But we've decided to do this business. I, odds are I'm going to retire from the car business. You know, I love this business. It's my, it's my <laughs> path. But, but if I decided to do something else, I know I could do it because I believe that if I just put my processes and my life processes in place, it's going to work right. out. So, yeah. and you've done that really well. Yeah. So, so you, you just, you just said that it's always, Service and sales and, and service against parts and, and all this, right. all, all that stuff. It, it, it becomes a lot of separate silos on the farm in, instead of everybody taking care of the, the, the field to produce what we need to. Um, yeah. what, what, what I always tell my teams are that it's not us against sales. It's not us against parts. It's not technicians against us. It's all of us for the customer. Come on. Bam. Come on. And yeah. that, that is where the focus always needs to be. It, it, it really doesn't matter whether somebody in part screwed up, whether, whether a sales guy waited until three minutes before his delivery to bring, to bring a car over to get running boards put on. None of that matters. What matters is there's a customer on the other end of that, and that customer is what keeps our doors open. In fact, you know, and I love that you said that. That's exactly the mentality that everybody needs to have. Here's the thing. The only real competition in life, period, is yourself. You need to understand yeah. that the only thing you need to worry about is what you have control over. It's what you do. So like you mentioned, you can have a salesperson drop off something last second when they should have had it done hours before or whatever, mm -hmm. but that's, that's not your fault. That is, is it the salesperson's fault? Maybe, but overall, what's, what do you have control over? Well, they're right. bringing you something. You, you do it. You knock it out. You do it with enthusiasm. It's for that client. And that's yes. the end game because that client will remember the enthusiasm. That client will come back for their parts. That client mm -hmm. will come back for this. But when they feel like there's tension in the front and back, 
Because you, I've seen it where yes. the salesperson talks bad about this, or like, you know, there's something that somebody brought up once, and I and I thought it was a really cool point was that when a salesperson on the front side is always bringing it back and always asking for discounts every single time, it's not yeah. who, no, they don't want to deal with that salesperson. You know, you got to understand <laughs> that that sales salespeople, it's okay to ask for a discount when you have a client and you need. But when, but when it right. comes to that, you should just refer all your clients to your service department. Every one mm-hmm. of them. It, it, yeah. Discount or not, there's always going to be discounts in a service department. We all know how that goes, right? Yep. There's always, always some kind of sale going on, whether you're on the front side or the back side. There's always some way you can help the client save money. Just refer them to your service department. You'd be surprised how great and how much they'll re- uh, receive that. Because when you don't refer any of your clients there, you don't help them out. You don't bring clients back to meet your service reps. You don't do any of that type of stuff. It doesn't work. It's a team. Yeah. It's a team. Yeah. When you have a team, that's, you, that's you retention, man. Together. Yeah, that's retention. It really and that's, is. That's that, that. I mean, that's something that that the fixed op side of the house has understood for a long, long time. Uh, we need that retention. I, I don't need that customer to come in once, get an oil change. I don't need that customer to come in once and get fifteen hundred dollars worth of repairs. I need that customer to come in eight to ten to twelve years down the road. Every single year they're coming in, and then they're turning around and they're going to see Fred to buy a car. Exactly. Right. That right. that's that's what it's about, and and that introduction from sales to service is the one of the biggest factors in upping your retention. If you don't make that introduction, um, or you do it poorly, service services over there, yeah. um, <laughs> that, that you start to lose those customers. There, there are too many places for customers to go. Which, quite frankly, as dealerships, we invited them to go to those places back in the day. Um, and, and and now uh, a lot of those places are eating our lunch, and we're trying to get our lunch back. And and we need to work as a team to make sure that that we don't just hand the lunch down down the line to 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 the uh, independent bully. 